Hey everyone, my name is Emma. Today I wanted to talk about books that made me feel a little less lonely and I wanted to create a tag called the Little Less Lonely Tag. Hi, my name is Emma and in honor of my first year of booktube, I am bringing back my most favorite video I've ever made, my most favorite thing I've ever done here on booktube and that is a Little Less Lonely Tag. Hello, my name is Emma and I'm back and I'm doing an old favorite, I'm doing my favorite video that I do every year or at least every year, meaning the past two years and that video is a little less lonely tag. Hello, my name is Emma. So, um, today, I'm going to be doing the little less lonely tag. Hello, my name is Emma Tobias. Today is a very special day. It is that time of year that I'm gonna be doing a little less lonely tag. My name is Emma Tobias. And it's that time of year again where I'm reevaluating all of my life choices. I put my Emma Tobias twist on it. Apparently, that's a twist. And turn this into my Little Less Lonely tag. Welcome to the Little Less Lonely tag year six. As you could see from that little montage of all of my baby selves, I have been doing this video for a very long time. And unlike other years, I have Prosecco to help me through it. Around this time each fall, the November-ish time, I talk about the reason why I read, which is ultimately to feel a little less lonely. The reason why I make booktube videos, to also feel a little less lonely. I'll drink to that and the end of Trump's pregnancy. There have been many iterations of a little less lonely tab through the years. I have talked about cozy reads. I have talked about my feelings towards the general booktube community, wax poetic if you will, that was last year. And I've also talked about general art and culture. But this year, I'm throwing it back to the original. The first two years I did a little less lonely tag where I stuck to my prompt. I thought to add something a little different, I would compare my answers today in 2020 to my answers in 2014 and 2015 and do a little self-reflection. I will not be showing you many clips or any clips from these videos. The intro is all you're getting because frankly, I can't watch these videos again in any capacity. Let's get started. Classic that seemed to get you. Basically a classic book, modern or not, where you identified with the main character or any of the characters on a deep level. Now, in 2020, I would say I identify with most main characters that are not men who are scrambling a lot and curse a lot and maybe drink too much, but are overall like a fun time. But back then I was not as loosey-goosey as I am now, so. This first year in 2014, I chose Emma by Jane Austen, which I think is kind of a dig to myself. Way to slap yourself in the face, 20-year-old me, 19-year-old me. Basically, back then, I think I had a complex where I thought if I said all of my faults, you know, she is handsome, definitely didn't think she was, clever, wise, and kind of a bitch, then people would leave me alone. And for the most part, that was not true. Emma is a great book, though. Second year, I chose Anne of Green Gables. Now, I am definitely not Anne Shirley. I do not have Anne Shirley's pluck. I do not have her drive or her ambition. Back then when I was 20, probably did. Now, not at all. I'm like, I have a job. Is this it? This year, I would choose Gaudy Knight by Dorothy L. Sayers, a book I've talked about a lot. And I would say I identify with Harriet Vane in Gaudy Knight. Gaudy Knight is part of the Lord Peter Whimsey series. It's a golden age mystery series featuring the main character, Lord Peter Whimsey, as he sleuths his way all over England. But he has a trusty helper, advisor, confidant, and future lover, Harriet Vane. Harriet Vane is a wanton woman. She is living with men that she's not married to. She writes mystery novels. She has her own income. She wears a nice cloach, cloach hat. She went to a women's college. She's solving mysteries at the women's college. I feel like Harriet Vane is such a great character because even though this book was written in the 1930s, she is supremely having that question of, can I have it all? Can I be in love and still have a brain? Can I be in love and still have a career? Is this man gonna chain me? 
Am I Jane Eyre? Harriet Vane identified with Jane Eyre, except for Lord Peter Wimsey ends up respecting her um, at the end of the book and not because of a fire. So a surprise, a book that surprised you with how much it affected, it's affected or affected, that's in parentheses, you. This one's a little rough. In 2014, I said Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I chose that. I remember why I chose that. I did just watch the video, but also I remember because in that book, the main character realizes that she hates her college and she wants to leave. And I read that while I was at my college, my freshman year, and I wanted to leave. And so that really hit home. And I remember that packed quite a punch. Do I think that book holds up? No, not at all. And am I ever gonna read it ever again? No, not at all. I think I liked it because that was the only Gail Foreman book that didn't involve straight sadness. You gotta stick with me here. You have to understand I've grown in five years, okay? The second book is A Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. I think I chose this because I was trying to be cool because I was at a point when I was 20 and I was dating a guy who told me that I was silly and the things that I cared about were not of value that I thought by reading a literary fiction novel by a beloved author he would take me seriously and booktube would take me seriously in reality I don't remember anything about that book I probably did not remember anything about that book two months after I read it I remember being like I read this entire book I'm not stupid like everyone thinks I am I have a therapist I don't know why I'm doing this here for the year of our lord 2020 for this question book that surprised you i'm gonna go with queenie by candace cardi williams i read this book earlier this year i absolutely loved it it completely broke me and put me back together and made me laugh i felt like queenie was probably the most realistic character that i have read in a long time i thought it was the perfect blend of humor and darkness and felt like such a cathartic read for 2020. And if you haven't read it or listened to the audiobook, because the audiobook is superior, I would. The next question, a book you read at just the right time, colon, pretty self-explanatory. I said Percy Jackson. I said Percy, the entire Percy Jackson series, which is very on brand for me, even today. Definitely still holds up. I still haven't done my reread of the fifth book. Gotta get to that. Um, and I think that's a really solid answer. And I think it was really important in my reading life because I read it at a time when I felt like I wasn't going to be able to be a, like a, a quote unquote real reader because I wasn't reading that much. So I think that's fair. I also chose that year, the fifth Harry Potter book. And let me tell you, that is the only Harry Potter book that I remember ever resonating with me. But in fairness, I was on a lot of antidepressants. But I do think that's a fair answer in 2014. The next year, uh, I chose The Magicians, the entire Magician series. This is, you know, uh, a very controversial series, meaning that literally people either love it or hate it. I love it. I, I really found Quentin's character arc to be really powerful. He starts off as the most annoying person in your English class that you've ever met, and then turns out to be kind of an okay guy. Before you say, have you watched the show? I have, and I don't like it, so that's that. For 2020, I'm going to choose Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Please don't tell me. Have you read her other book? I have. I'm choosing Furiously Happy. I like her other book. I'm excited for her newest book. But Furiously Happy um, means the world to me because of how frankly and how humorously she talks about her mental health. It's a book that I plan on rereading soon because I haven't read it in a long time. And the first time I read it, I sobbed most of the way through in these big cathartic sobs. I think it's a book that speaks on her experience with mental illness and health problems in a way that um, I think is incredibly powerful and nuanced. Next, we're gonna go with book that inspires you. Again, pretty self-explanatory. I chose Why Not Me and Beauty Queen. I'm not mad at those. Beauty Queen's by Love Brain, Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling. Um, Mindy Kaling has become sort of a parody of herself and her Instagram account, but I do like the way she writes, and I do think that that book is really good, and I also really, um, enjoy, you know, a little, a little beauty queen's moment. 
I haven't read in a long time either, but I remember thinking it was like a very cool badass book and I like Le Bebre. Don't know if it holds up. The next year, I chose My Life in France by Julia Child, which is Julia Child's memoir about living in France. I love travel memoirs a lot. This also though totally came from a place of wanting my boyfriend to take me seriously. I like Julia Child. 2020, I'm gonna choose Priest Daddy by Patricia Lockwood. Yes, this book is about uh, Patricia Lockwood's very weird experience in her childhood growing up with a father who is a priest who circumnavigated the rules. I don't find necessarily the content inspiring, but I find the way that Patricia Lockwood writes incredibly inspiring. She's a poet. She writes with grace and humor and these like stunning metaphors that I think could become really crass or really on the nose if anyone else was writing them, but she does it in a way that I really enjoy. A book that calms you, colon, see the two above. In 2014, I chose Time with Soft Air by Jeremy Mercer. I've talked about this book a couple of times in my cozy Little Less Only tag a couple years ago, I talked about this book. This is a memoir of a guy who is running away from the mob in Canada, I'm 99% sure. And he goes to uh, Paris and lives at Shakespeare and Company. And it's about the history of Shakespeare and Company and his time there. The time was soft there. It's a really beautiful book. Again, I haven't read it since 2014, 2013. But I heard about it from Booktube and it was one of the first books I heard about from Booktube back in like 2012. The next year I chose If Walls Could Talk by Lucy Worsley. Lucy Worsley is a historian of royal palaces. So just a historian of imperialism and colonialism. Great. But she is a, a kind of a fun person and she wrote this book about the history of rooms in England and I never finished it um, but I was reading it at the time and found it really comforting because I found Lucy Worsley in the deepest darkest point of my depression very comforting which I think is totally fair. Today in 2020 in a similar British vein I would choose anything by Richard Ayuwadi. Richard Ayuwadi is a British comedian who is very dry and very snarky and whenever I read one of his books, he has three, or listen to one of his audiobooks, I feel like I'm confused but in a way I'm good with and I'm also laughing and that makes me happy. Now in 2015 I tacked on one last question and I'm gonna do it here and that is book that brings on the nostalgia takes you back. Except for I did a bunch of C's, so back. Back then, in 2015, I chose the very good answer of The Agency by Y.S. Lee, which is a fantastic YA series about a mystery solver little girl in Victorian England, and I think that's a good answer. Now, I would probably choose Anna and the French Kiss, which I reread a couple years ago and did not enjoy. But it is a book that I think has, I have so many good warm feelings about from my, from my teenage years and I have a lot of nostalgia, but I also don't think it holds up and I think that's okay. I am still kind of thinking about getting the 10th anniversary edition that's really pretty and just like giving it to, no, I don't want to give that book to my niece because there's too much weird stuff with cheating. <laughs> highlight it and be like this isn't good don't do this <laughs> I don't know um I hope you guys enjoyed this if you want to do a little less only tag I'll put the questions the original questions in the bio um it's a cute tag that is six years old so there's there's something cute about that anyway have a lovely day I'm gonna finish this Prosecco bye